Good morning, Aubrey. Um, do you have any favorite snacks? Ooh, yes. Um, dried apples. I've always loved oh. dried apples. I'll either dehydrate them They're myself healthy. or buy them at like Costco. <gasps> That's awesome. Uh, delicious, but also lots of unhealthy snacks. <laughs> Usually right. snacks are like unhealthy. When mm -hmm. I think of snacks, I think of like like chips and dip yeah. and, and chips and dip, chips and salsa. Like unhealthy stuff. Lots of chips. I, Lots I of try chips. to do like nuts, dried fruit, <laughs> you know, healthy things, but really I want to reach for something sugary. I love sugary and sweet and salty together. So I'll yeah. want, you know, like candy, sugary candy and like chips at the same time. <gasps> Trail mix. Yes. Trail I mix love must trail mix. be your jam. I do love trail mix. <laughs> so um, there's a good note, guys. If you're describing something that you really like, just say it's your jam. That's like such good native natural slang. Totally. It could be anything. It could be like true crime murder podcasts are my jam. Um, cheese and crackers are my jam. Like anything Ooh, you like so could be your jam. So and you're almost guaranteed to be asked on part one something about yeah. what you like or your favorite so you're going to be able to sneak that in uh, on an answer Completely. for sure totally um so guys we are going to teach you some phrases um that the examiner will love if you're talking about food and snacks today and then we're going to use them in sample answers so the reason why we thought of uh this topic is because i posted a youtube short a few weeks ago um just showing you what i was snacking on and it was cheese and crackers that's like my number one favorite snack mm. and um uriel g left a cool comment that we want to share before we get into the vocab so aubrey can you read his comment yes wow good question here in colombia typically we have for snack empanadas mm. a kind of fried food okay. made with flour and every kind of meat or cheese side note uriel i'm obsessed with empanadas they're Love delicious empanadas. or dessert empanadas oh my oh. gosh <gasps> so sweet good. empanadas yes. oh my gosh so oh, yummy sweet or savory oh so good yeah sometimes with eggs or sausage onion ham it depends inside of it it's march perfectly oh it Matches, it matches perfectly with coca-cola even yeah. with coffee or hot chocolate yes absolutely Good note mm. and you know what that would be a fabulous speaking part one answer right there uriel like that was so good well look at all that detail that he provided about just describing one snack from his country right? and all of that amazing specific vocabulary right like mm -hmm. sausage onions ham like it's so good flour oh stuffed with yes. so much good vocab so good. There. and as a side note if you ever go to new york city go to ruben's empanadas downtown uh -oh. oh my gosh these giant <laughs> most delicious empanadas and then you can also take frozen ones home if you are staying oh, at like a vrbo where you have oh amazing don't miss it I love it. All right. So we did um, a blog post like years and years ago on some excellent snacking vocab. So if you want to check that out for more words, uh, go to allearsenglish.com and just search eight plus vocabulary um, snacks and it'll come mm -hmm. up. Um, but let's get to new vocabulary. So the first phrase is a bite. Now, like literally, right? A bite is when you like home. You, you should watch this on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. When you just like literally take a bite, like one mouthful of something, but we use it as an idiom. How do we use that idiomatically? Yeah, I usually collocate it with grab. I'm going to grab a bite totally. or get. Yeah, I'm going to get a bite. And that means I'm going to get a snack. I'm going to get something small. We're not talking about a whole meal, right? Yeah. But we will. I think I feel like I also say like, want to get a bite to eat? And I mean, I like, let's go that. get lunch. Let's go get dinner, right? It just, yeah. it's just interesting. We use that a few different ways. Totally. So instead of, I mean, there are so many food questions um, in IELTS speaking part one, right? Um, and all of this vocab is fantastic for that stuff. And what if you're describing like a meal or um, a special event in part two? You can use this too, because food is always a part of a special event. Absolutely. Right? Right. So instead of being like, um, I took my friend out to dinner, we could be like, um, I, I grabbed a bite with my friend. Like, last night and it was amazing. 
Yes, absolutely. Okay, the next one is Good Eats, which this is really fun. Um, It's a little more slang, definitely Mm -hmm. good for speaking part one, but it's just a way to describe food that's yummy, right? You say like, ooh, they have a lot of good eats at that bakery. And you mean they have lots of yummy pastries. It is fun. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, just lots of good food. Like that's Mm -hmm. all it means. So it's really easy to use. Um, And the next word, now this is high level. This could be used anywhere on IELTS. Peckish. So peckish is an adjective and it just means a little bit hungry. Um, But honestly, we... uh, it's we often use it as a, like it's kind of a lie almost or like sarcastic like yeah i'm i'm peckish i could eat which usually that means like yeah i'm i'm hungry I'm let's hungry. go eat let's go get some <laughs> food yeah but this is a really fun native response if anyone asks if you are hungry or ready to eat that to say instead of saying yes i'm hungry right say yeah i'm peckish and this would be great for any part one or part two question about food, where you like to eat. You can just say, when I'm feeling peckish, my favorite dive is right around the corner and go into all the details about what you would order there. Exactly. Exactly. It's such a good adjective. Um, Okay. I love this last one. Guilty pleasure. We might have taught you this in a previous episode, but a long time ago. So let's, uh, let's review that. And it's new for some people. So a guilty pleasure is anything that you enjoy. Um, and it's not super good for you, or there might be like a taboo against it of some sort. So like, Related to food, a guilty pleasure would be, you know, ice cream, dessert, whatever. Um, But we also use it to describe viewing habits if you're asked about TV and movies. Um, Like a guilty pleasure might be watching a super trashy reality show or something. Like people don't think it's good, but you love it. (laughs) Or like both at once to be like, my guilty pleasure is eating chips on my bed while watching The Bachelor. Because of bag of Doritos and whatever dating show. I don't know. (laughs) You you don't even know one to name it. I don't. I could name a few. Watch any of them. Married at First Sight. Um, Love (laughs) Island. (laughs) Wait, isn't there one like 90 Day Fiance? Yes, I think so. That one sounds funny. Yes, yes. No. There's... I think it's it's all terrible. I don't watch any of it. Um, don't be so but judgy, that's... Jess. A lot of our I know. listeners might have solidarity with me. I, I watch some of those. So, I watch I'm a sorry. lot of those. I'm obsessed. <laughs> but I see, like that's why it's like a great example of a guilty pleasure Absolutely. because there's gonna be two viewpoints, like yours and mine, right? And you're like, oh, kind I'm of like, a guilty pleasure. It is a guilty pleasure. I'm a little embarrassed, but also I'm admitting it to all of our listeners. So not that embarrassed. <laughs> All right, so let's challenge ourselves now to use this vocabulary in some speaking part one questions. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you first. Okay, okay perfect. Yes. Um, what are your favorite snacks? Ooh, first, I will always reach for chips, a bag of chips, dip, or chips and salsa, but I have to have it with something sweet absolutely all the time. Um, my, if ever I just want a quick bite, I'm going to grab like chocolate or sugary candy and also pretzels or chips or nuts because I don't want one with the other without the other, right? No, thank you. <laughs> No, thank you. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> some great bonus vocab there. And this is a phrase you've used a couple times, which I love, reach for. Mm. Um, that's just instead of saying, like, I get. You, you know what I mean? Like, and oh, that verb get is horrible. Really it overused. Is, it's so overused for, for everything, right? First of yes. all, like never use get in writing, guys. There's always a more specific, a higher level verb than get. Yes. But here is also like instead of saying like I get some chips, like I reach for a bag of chips. So much better. Um, all right, cool. Now, okay. Now I want to answer one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you enjoy the same snacks when you were a child? Uh, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Um, my guilty pleasures food wise have always been the same. I love like snacks that are full of fat and sodium, like French fries and tater tots and potato chips. Um, and oh, to pile on top, both idiomatically and literally, um, sauce. Oh my gosh, I could just pour ranch all over 
<laughs> my French fries, which is it's so oh, it's terrible. But um, if I'm like if I'm at all peckish and I don't have time to cook, then I'm gonna reach for some really unhealthy snacks. Oh, so good. <laughs> I'm at pile on top. And to be able to recognize that it is and say like both idiomatically and literally <laughs> band nine, the examiner's like, ooh, yay, band nine, right? Steal that, guys. Steal, steal that. Steal Absolutely. all of this vocabulary. Whenever something does is like the literal meaning, you actually literally would pile it on top. And we're kind of also using a metaphor. Absolutely yeah. say that. And I also wanted to point out, we have done a lot of grammar episodes where we teach you, not a lot, but you know, we've taught you how to use present perfect. Go back and listen to that answer because Jessica yeah. did it exactly how you should, where she said, I have my guilty pleasures have always been the same is how she said it. And that's where you want to use present perfect is to introduce a story. Time yeah. doesn't matter. It's always been that way. That's when you're going to yeah. use that present perfect tense have been, have always been so good. I love that note. Yeah. Um, just, uh, just like a last tip there. Cause I know we've done whole episodes about it, yeah. but yeah, present perfect. We often use it as just an introduction sentence when you're going to talk about something in the past and often compare it to now. So yeah. great for speaking part two and part one. Um, all right. Last question. How often do you snack? Oh, way too often um, between every meal, uh, especially at like 2 p.m. I'll eat lunch around noon and then at 2 p.m. I just feel a little bit peckish and I need to eat something that's never good for me. And also late night. This is really dangerous. I know is against every, you know, dietitian's advice that at like 9, 10 p.m. I'm going to be pulling out chips and salsa or maybe a bowl of cereal. And I always <laughs> want just a little bite at night, late at night while I'm watching TV. <laughs> a little bite at night. That yeah, rhymes. That's great. Nice. <laughs> um, so remember to take note on our pronunciation as well, because the way that uh, Aubrey introduced that answer way too often. Um, guys, remember, even if you're not very um, expressive in your first language, you have to be an actor or actress on the IELTS exam because getting a seven or higher on pronunciation that's the easiest category to get at least one seven in to help yes. your score, right? I actually just taught a, an IELTS student who had amazing vocabulary, nearly perfect grammar, and was very fluent, not a lot of pauses. But unfortunately, she was just always speaking in a monotone, no yeah. variation of tone, no emotion. And once we started talking about it, that's very much how she speaks in her first language too. Yeah. I'm like, this is going to be so sad if that pulls down your overall score. You've got to practice varying your intonation. Definitely. And to be completely honest, when we are able to emphasize with our voice better vocabulary, then that can increase your vocab score because the examiner then notices that mm -hmm. vocabulary. Um, like in the case that you were just talking about, it's easy for an examiner to miss some very awesome vocabulary if it's not highlighted by your voice at all. Right. If it's just running into boring, you know, like adjectives or boring, mm. whatever, um, little prepositions and stuff like that, it all runs together. Yeah, they're not taking notes. So it has to right. really stand out in their mind for them to be sure to catch it. That's a, yeah, that's true. Ooh. Yeah. All right, guys. So definitely come back to allearsenglish.com because we have a plethora of uh, blog posts and videos and so much on there. You could do a deep dive into some more IELTS topics. All right. Awesome. Uh, Aubrey, this has been super fun. Yes, yeah, so fun. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.